So one of the most vulnerable parts of a quad is actually going to be the ESC. And the reason why an ESC is vulnerable, it is just because that is the electronic speed controller, the part that actually powers the motors, the motors, while it is the one that gives the thrust, the ESC has these gates that continuously open and close to power to send the signals to the motors. And the ESC is vulnerable uh, because of the spikes that might occur when you crash, right? And then those are the reasons why the ESC burns more easily compared to other parts of the quad. The ESC that is in favor for most people nowadays is a 4-1 ESC. Basically what it is is you have an ESC, four ESCs on the same board. Essentially what you have is four ESCs on the same board. So it's easy to just put on, stack on, and then solder your motors. And then it's minimal work. That's why people love the 4-1 ESCs. But in the before 4-1 ESCs, or at least before 4-1 ESCs was popular, a lot of people used individual ESCs. So today, I'm gonna give a new challenge for me. I've never done this before, but I figure, what's the difference between a 4-in-1 ESC and individual ESC? It basically has the same wiring. It's VBAT is ground, it's signal. It's VBAT is ground, it's signal on a 4-in-1 ESC. So if I actually burn one of the ESCs on a 4-in-1, why can't I just then tag on an individual ESC and rather than buy a $50 4-in-1 ESC, why don't I just have a simpler solution, which is just use a $10 individual ESC, just tack it on onto the arm, wire it up, and then go and fly. So let's see whether I can do it or not. And you and me are going to learn something today. Okay, so this is the first time doing this, but I have this rush blade stack which I just love. And it's a pity that I was um, caught in one of the trees and I turtle mode to get it down there and then it burnt the ESC. So what it actually burnt was this uh, number one is okay, number three is okay, I haven't wired it up, but number three is okay, number four is okay. And I used the multimeter in order to figure out which ESC uh, went wrong other than it's not turning. So you can see my video in the link that actually teaches you how to uh, try to figure out not just because the motor ain't turning but how to actually tell whether your ESC is dead or not because it's connected to ground or connected to uh, VBAT. In this case I know my number two is bad so number one, number three, number four is okay. So what do I do? So what I'm trying to MacGyver myself here is to use this ESC. I'm using this Skystar 40 amp BL32 6S ESC for the only reason why I wasn't using the one that I showed you in the video because it's too large for these skinny arms. So using the Skystar here, so it's basically right for this iFlight Nazgul frame. So here, the wires that I told you, which is the ground, VBAT and signal. So essentially what I'm gonna do here is just solder this, this on to the ground, solder this on to VBAT. Of course, I'm gonna put in a capacitor, but then this, this signal wire, where does it actually go? So we're gonna skip these this ESC or these three pads because this is basically dead on arrival already. But what we're gonna try to figure out is to connect this signal wire to signal wire number two. So signal wire number two is coming out from the ESC. So this is a uh, ground VBAT and then uh, M1, M2, M3, M4 uh, signal motor two from the FC then just connect it to this wire. So what will then happen theoretically is whenever the flight controller is sending a signal for the uh, motor number two to turn, it will send the signal through the motor wire number two. It will then be received by the ESC, uh, individual ESC signal wire. So it should not be any the wiser. Theoretically, this should work. If this is all BL32 is all set in the same settings, if I wire it all up, let's now wire it all up. Okay, so now we have it all connected up. Now I have the 40 amp 
Sky Star. So I have the 40 amp Sky Star ESC already hooked up and it looks quite nice. It, it looks actually as if it belongs with all the race wires here. Uh, you know, I don't think anybody would notice it unless somebody was looking really, really close. So just picking the rush blade analog, you'll see one change I made. So rather than splicing the signal line, I made a change. But anyway, go first through the V bat and ground. So basically now it's soldered onto the power leads and I have the capacitor here. So it don't, doesn't have to be too neat because you know, really who cares, okay? So all the motors are connected except motor number two. The only thing I, I refrained from doing was I removed the motor two wire. Okay, so there's no motor two wire. But then uh, because I actually started off trying to splice it together, but I'm not a good splicer. So what I did alternatively was actually transfer the resource of motor two to motor five. I wanted to use the pad of motor five because it's the closest to the uh, Skystar ESC. I just wanted the signal to just go be soldered to the motor five. So I just typed in resource motor five none. So that's freeze motor five resource. And then I typed in motor two resource the previous number. I think it was a C O B O seven. The, what the flight controller will think of is whenever it thinks of motor two, it actually then goes through the link of, it goes to the pad of motor five, but it thinks it is motor two, so it sends a signal, so it's none the wiser. So this setup should actually be perfect, but let me let me show you right now, I'm gonna hook it onto BL32, BL Heli Suite, and then we will see from a software point of view, it actually sees the difference of the Skystar ESC, but in terms of functionality, the quad will not care. So because the firmware of the Skystar and the Rushblade ESC doesn't quite match, so go ahead and sync between ESC1 and ESC2 and away you go. Firing up the motor test page, turn it on, yep, all four motors turning, motor 2 is turning, no problem, same RPM and we fixed the ESC, yay, so we can go fly now and good luck to anybody trying the same and save your money, save your ESC.